Fresh? Barf me out? Home fries? We're in the 80s, dude! We've arrived at Neon Mixtape Tour. I'm sure everyone's been waiting for this world, considering what the world's gimmick is. Music. On the other hand, having the mushrooms from Dark Ages opens up new possibilities for our defenses. Day 2 expands on the world's gimmicks by introducing Punk Zombie, who will react differently when their preferred music is playing. So no head? Check it out, we can use Cactus who's undergone a serious upgrade since the first game. Day 4 gives us Sunflower and Spike Wheat for some reason. I guess to suggest buying Cactus? The amount of Bucketheads has severely increased in levels though. I'd add Since We Got Magnet Room, but remember there were three worlds released after Dark Ages before Neon Mixtape Tour. Okay, now I know that sounds bad, but Fat Beat's range isn't that good. If I can keep anything from entering their range, I should be able to prevent them from attacking. Except, that's easier said than done. I have a good strategy going here. If I could only get a little boost. Oh, that's right. There was possibly a better time for this, but with enough sun, this level is more than possible. No fat beats used. Day 6 is the Celery Stalker level, so we might be out of luck for this one. We do start getting Fume Shrooms later into it, but at the rate we're getting them, I doubt they take this out. It's night 13 all over again. Hey, check it out! We can now boost plants for gems. And we can check the Zen Garden whenever we want. Here's our chance to fight Glitter Zombie head on who makes any zombie behind her mostly invulnerable. We don't have enough time to stall, so Fume Shrooms and Puff Shrooms are our ticket to a quick defense. Puff Shrooms getting his viability back, man. Dude, why are there so many costumes for Wintermelon? Oh. It's this level. This level becomes way too bloated for pea shooters to handle, and most of our mowers get used by the end. This level, just barely passable. On the other hand, Day 10 is far from passable. It's embarrassing how poorly plants from this world can handle the world's gimmicks. Fatbeat has short range and low damage, Celery Stalker stays out of the ground too long after attacking, and Time Warp, while good, isn't exactly a counter, rather a staller. MC Zombie is essentially a zombie cherry bomb with no end lag when their music is playing. Enough said. Do the programmers just forget to code in the level goals sometimes? Anyways, this level is possible. Time Warp is also 100 sun now. Does that mean we can use it in any world now, or what's the deal? Day 12 introduces Hair Metal Gargantuars, who is the first Gargantuar you really shouldn't stall. And then there's Day 13. I tried using Fume Shrooms, Spike Weeds, hell, even Cabbage Pult's plant food, but that's just way too many bucket heads. No, yeah, that's totally f***ing fair. <sighs> Guess we gotta do things the hard way too.
If you want to count me using Snopey as a win in this run, you may. Personally, I think it breaks the premium rule. But if this level is beatable in any other way, please let me know because I swear I tried everything. I hate my life. I hate your life too, dude. Hey, guess what? This level's actually possible. Albeit with an extra seed slot. You'll be using both sunflowers and sunshrooms to maximize sun production. Stall as much as you can and get some magnet shrooms set up early. Puff shrooms are going to be your main line of defense. They're free and their plant food is extremely good in a pinch. You can also use Cherry Bomb or Mower Launch in a panic, but it's worth having Cherry Bombs available once this wave of MC Zombies comes in. Finally, builds up a column or two of Spike Weeds for Glitter Zombies. Your defense should suffice by the end if you've done everything correctly, and you'll have beaten this level without using your Fat Beats. Congratulations! You can't convince me this level was playtested. We've now arrived at Part 2 of Neon Mixtape Tour. And with Part 2 comes new zombies and a new plant for us to get. Breakdancer Zombie pushes zombies forward, even Gargantuars. We did get another PvZ1 plant though, Garlic. Although, I'm not sure why Garlic had to be introduced in this world. This clip shows about how well Garlic counters these zombies. Electric Blueberry Tutorial, next. Holy crap, Friday Night Funkin', what brings you to Plants vs Zombies? Been a while since one of these levels, huh? At least Blover works on zombies that have been pushed forward. Oh, this level was hell. Day 22 is another impossible conveyor level. So how about a fun fact? Do you know that the music in Neon Mixtape Tour are the only songs in the Plants vs Zombies 2 original soundtrack to have official names? They were even uploaded to SoundCloud of all music platforms under the artist's PopCap Audio. Cool, huh? F day 26 is unfortunately the only impossible Save Our Seeds level in this world. On the other hand, Day 27 is a possible conveyor level giving us fume shrooms, cherry bombs, and garlics. Days 28 to 30 aren't worth talking about, and day 31 is themed around using electric blueberry. Again. That leaves us with one last level. Day 32, Zomboss. Yeah, that went about as well as I expected. I don't want to get overly negative, but this boss is straight up shittily designed. There is zero balance here, Nearly any thought to how these mechanics can work in a way that isn't frustrating. When I lose, I most of the time don't even consider it my fault. It's the game's fault for artificially increasing the difficulty in zombie spam, shockwave spam, and gargantuar spam without providing enough counters for it. Zomboss has 5 phases in this fight. 5 for each music type excluding ballad. The first is make or break, you're either holding up your defense or losing. The second is pop, and includes a lot more shockwaves from the amps. You gotta get through this phase quickly, otherwise you'll only have a handful of plants left on the lawn. The third is Rap, and has the most dangerous selection of zombies, Breakdancers and MC Zombie. With MC Zombie's plant destroying abilities and Breakdancers' abilities to push them forward, it's obvious why this phase is as difficult as it is. The fourth is Chiptune, and is easily the most overwhelming phase. Zomba spawns Arcade Zombies, and Arcade Machines spawn 8-bit zombies. If you don't die to the zombie spam, then you'll make it to the final phase, Metal. This is where the level goes to shit. This phase is straight up Gargantuar and Shockwave spam. You deadass cannot hold up a defense here due to the frequency of Shockwaves killing your plants and Gargantuars. So just focus on taking out Zomboss instead. Because once you get that last good hit on him, it'll be oh so satisfying. If it wasn't obvious from this compilation, this level is one of the furthest from possible with just PvZ1 plants. Garlic gets destroyed constantly, and the conveyor belt doesn't give you more than 3 cacti. 3 cacti! At the very least, Cactus's plant food is good for the fight, but 3 cacti and 2 garlic aren't taking all this, come on now. <sighs> so that's it. Neon Mixtape Tour. I liked it. Was it difficult? Obviously. Did I have to bend my rules a couple times just to suggest that certain levels may be possible? Maybe. But, you can't tell me this world isn't cool. It's got a really fun world mechanic, and each zombie is incredibly original and full of personality. Do the plants suck? Kinda. But hey, I'm not using them so who cares? Will I ever attempt greatest hits? 
Are you kidding me? Are, Are you, you kidding, kidding me? me? Are you, you out of your mind? Hello, Tyrannosaurus Allen. I'm filling my water with cum. We're in the big leagues now. Jurassic Marsh. Day one isn't very gimmicky, so I decided to try out garlic. After all, there's nothing here that can instantly destroy it. Turns out it dies in about three bites depending on the zombie's eating speed, so that sucks. We've also got Jurassic Fossil Head Zombies, who are essentially night zombies without removable armor. Beating Day 1 gives us Primal Pea Shooter, which has unwillingly reminded me that we won't have access to some of the best plants in the vanilla game. We'll have to work with what we have to counter dinosaurs. Unsurprisingly, Blover is a decent counter for raptors. As for Tallnut... We've got Melon Pults! But the way we're getting them isn't fast enough to take out these Jurassic Fossil Head Zombies. We'll have to use our Grape Shots. It doesn't help that we lose all our mowers at the first wave anyways. Considering that we can't push back zombies with Primal Pea Shooter, it may be more smart to keep our defense in the back. Twin Sunflower saves a lot of space, Fume Shroom pierces everything, and if we stall enough, we can get our Walnut set up early. Still, no Primal Walnut is a serious disadvantage for me. Day 6 introduces the Stegosaurus. Thankfully, these zombies can still be blovered. Hey look, the flag texture is missing again. This strat is holding up surprisingly well, and I am not looking for new ones. Day 9 is an impossible lock to know to level. There's no way we're beating a Jurassic Marsh level with just Potato Mine and Sunshroom. This level also introduces Pterodactyls, which can carry any zombie to the first column to attack our plants from behind. Interestingly, Pterodactyls can't carry zombies for as long as they don't get past the first tile on the lawn. This is where Primal Walnut would have its use, but we can't really use it. Just goes to show how out of hand things can get without it in this world. <laughs> Day 10 is our chance to find a good strategy against Pterodactyls. Finding that good strategy, however, is near impossible with how little safe space there is in the lawn once all the dinosaurs roll in. And so, after some thinking, I decided. If the zombies want to make our lawn their stomping grounds, we might as well give them something to step on. Oh god. There is no way that just f***ing worked. Oh no. What? Who? What? You're telling me that on top of protecting the primal walnuts, and dealing with the higher HP gargantuars, I've got to deal with pterodactyls as well? I don't think the all spike weed strat is going to suffice without some adjustments, but what am I supposed to add? And then, it hit me. Okay, now hear me out. Garlic is actually really f***ing good in this world. Yes, his health sucks. Yes, his recharge is dumb. Yes, he gets destroyed by anything that doesn't eat, which is like 80% of all the new zombies in this game. But when he shines, he shines. And you can call him a Paulia Condensate in this world because my god does he shine. As for day 16, and the crowd is mildly surprised. <sighs> Me too, Dave. Me too. Day 18 introduces the T-Rex, who's probably the most balanced dinosaur in terms of its ability, as the speed-up effect wears off once the zombie interacts with the plant. I'm also now ready to say that if you attempt this challenge yourself, consider buying Squash as your Gemium. It and Cherry Bomb have been incredible since the moment I obtained them. How in the world am I supposed to- Oh, right. Eh, seems easy enough. Yep, that was easy enough. Well, you didn't believe me? Jurassic bullies aren't more than just tanky zombies. Without access to Primal Pea Shooter, I'm not threatened by his special ability. Also, what is the zombie spam? Last stand. Our strat seemed fine, but there's nowhere we're taking this out, so lawnmower time. This strat is getting harder to keep up. For those who complained about Mecha Football Zombie, I raise you, Ankylosaurus. Push your zombies all the way up to the second column if there isn't a plan in the way to stop it. And even then, it pushes the plant back one space. I found a very unorthodox way of beating this level, but it's worth noting that the level didn't send a single Ankylosaurus in the top lane. Now this is what I was worried about. Pterodactyls and Ankylosaurus. If we have to let all our lawnmowers beat the level, then so be it. 
That's the worst possible set of dinos you could have given me. Actually, wait. At least I'm finally finding a use for Jalapeno. I don't know why I'm surprised Nine World's in. And, as per tradition, Day 31 is impossible. Come on now. That's cheating. <sighs> so glad to be nearly done with this world. And now, Day 32. Despite all the difficulties, this fight is surprisingly easy due to Primal Pea Shooter's constant stunning. Uh, what's he doing? Got him. Alright, I'm tired of waiting. And so, that concludes Jurassic Marsh. Honestly, this world was just a constant reminder of all the cool plants from this world that I can't use later. Of course, there were also the dinosaurs. Everything except the pterodactyls and ankylosaurus were fun to deal with. It's really cool finally finding a use for garlic, but I feel like I've been bouncing between the same two strategies all world just because they were the most optimal to use. And while that's good and all, there's a lot more fun in chaos. And, as we're approaching the last two worlds in this challenge, I'll be expecting a lot more chaos. Here's what you've been waiting for. Backyard beach, a backyard beach, nothing's out the reach, we got the backyard beach. Big Wave Beach, the only water world in this game. Whoa, deja vu. Anyways, water means lily pads, limited dry space, and worst of all, no spike weeds. Fun fact, Big Wave Beach is the only world in Plants vs Zombies 2 to have two variants of basic zombies, Pompadour and Bikini Zombies. The tides are coming in and out, but there's nothing to worry about. Day 3 gives us Chomper. If we're going by the Starford and Cactus rule, this level is technically possible as the game gives me Chomper to use. I am interested to see how much easier or harder these levels become after the Chomper buff. Also, once again, every plant is usable. Low Tide. Reminds me a bit of Necromancy from Dark Ages, but not as bad? If it is just imps, that is. Surely they wouldn't throw anything too strong in the middle of my defense, right? Slowest level in Big Wave Beach. Oh. Oh, I see where you're going with this. Okay, cool, I guess. Wait, what? Holy sh! I got so distracted by that! What is the programming on this plant? Was it always coded like this? Day 6, locked and half-loaded. I'm glad we can use all the plants in this loadout, but... Pea shooters? Really? Maybe we should bring a catapult plant for snorkel zombies. Yeah, this plant is absolute ass. We're really throwing everything out on the table, huh? Oh yeah. This level. Why are the seed packets like that? I swear the seed packet textures were fine before. Day 9 starts to limit us. I tried saving space with my defense because I wasn't sure how close or how far the low tide would be from my house. Puffshroom was actually really good here. Good for damage and for saving up sun. Also, don't be afraid to shovel up plants if you can replace them with something better. We get so close to beating this one, but I don't think Peashooter and Tangle Kelp are going to cut it. Especially not with Tangle Kelp's wonky hitboxes. Oh, now you give me more Peashooters. Maybe it is worth giving this level another shot. Well, we finally got another Peashooter. One pea shooter a little too late. I think we have another Frostbite Caves Day 21 situation, where the level is unbeatable without better RNG. As it stands, I think this is the best we can do. Good riddance. Locked and half loaded, and the introduction of Surfer Zombie. They're fast on the water, have lots of health, and can inconsistently destroy my plants with their surfboards. <sighs> this is gonna be rough. Good start. You know, how about we give these plants a try? I'm gonna say it? I f*** with this strat, that was incredible! Slowing zombies through splash damage really is a powerful effect. Oh yeah, time to see if Buff Chomper solos. Yep, he literally solos. Considering that's potato mines we're protecting, this level becomes a glorified don't let the zombies trample the flowers stage. Good place to do that. How is it taking me this long to realize the power of Melon Pulse in this run? Ah, here we are. The infamous Day 16. Taking into account that we have Walnuts, Lily Pads, Tangle Kelps, and a buffed Chomper, this could work out. 
Yeah, it doesn't seem like we're getting the RNG we need for this. It doesn't help that even with the plants we're given, this level is still stupid hard. No comment. Unsurprisingly, day 16 is another L we've just got to hold. We're now halfway through Big Wave Beach. Hooray! Also, it was 1am when I passed this level and I accidentally leveled up Tangle Kelp in the Almanac. Great. To be fair, I'll only be using them in this world, and its level 2 stats are much different from its level 1 stats. I'm just glad this accident happened in part 3 rather than parts 1 or 2. Anyways, day 17. This fucker doesn't need an introduction. You all knew he was coming. Just take him out as quick as possible. A single octopus can make a huge difference. Walk it out tutorial. Skip. Tangle Kelp being level 2 still pisses me off though. Squash, you fucking idiot! This single Octo Zombie has been alive long enough to take out everything in its lane. At least the mower can take out the octopi, which actually surprised me. Worst comes to worst, the melon's plant food effect targets octopi just as much as the ice blocks in Frostbite Caves. Let's go! I'm never gonna play this! Homing Thistle Tutorial. What is happening here? And Day 22 introduces Fisherman Zombie. At last, we've arrived at the peak of this sandy mound of anguish and misery. It's all downhill from here. Puff Shrooms are excellent bait to Fisherman Zombie. Plus, if you plant food Puff Shroom, any Puff Shrooms that are enclosed by Octopi will activate their plant food effect once the Octopi is destroyed. Day 23 has us protect the banana launchers, which is actually possible so long as we don't fire them. Are you kidding me? Whatever, it's a first time tutorial. Let me just try replaying the level. <sighs> okay, so I'm just gonna beat this stupid level under my challenge restrictions. Technically, this level is impossible because the game forces you to use Banana Launcher at the start, but if you think that shouldn't be the case, then take this level's possibility as you will. Wait, what? So this level is possible then. Just restart the level after playing through the tutorial and you won't have to do it again. Okay? This level's not even that hard. Stop playing with my emotions, game. I don't think we've had this goal since, what, Pirate Seas? I can't even blame the game for this one. I panicked. Actually, yes I can. Why doesn't the game stop you from planning anything that goes over your sun limit like in any other brain buster? I thought I wrote, I'm a god among men in my notes after winning. But it turns out I wrote, I'm a god among us, so... Yeah. Banana Walnut. That's the joke. You suck, McBain! Day 28. Don't lose more than five plants. You know, I'm beginning to wonder how worth it it'll be to try this level over and over again. Dealing with the first wave is fine, but anything after that is so terribly designed. Tell me. Why in a level with about 9 fisherman zombies and a gargantuar, should I be expected to not lose 5 plants? I get that Infinite's plant food practically invalidates fisherman zombie, but if anything, that makes me feel worse because I can't use the single plant that makes this level a cakewalk. If it wasn't obvious by the footage, the melon strategy was only getting me so far, so I thought to experiment with everything I had. Chill, fireballs, butter… I will say that chill seemed to be the way to go. And Tangle Cup's plant food effect was pretty great here, even at the expense of losing a plant. With every attempt, I was getting closer. And closer, and closer, and closer, and closer, until... He broke the lily pad. The lily pad. Wait. I don't need premium plants. I, I, I don't need snow pea, or chomper, or... Or cactus, I guess. Why pay for a solution to this level when I have access to the most busted, free-to-play mechanic in this game?
Where's your savior now, Big Wave Beach? You didn't need a buff chopper. You needed a nerf sunshroom. Oh, we did it. Cool. Day 29, last stand. I need more than just one call in the defense thanks to this bastard, along with a lot of lily pads. You know what? That's about as far as I'm getting, so I'm just rolling with it. Impossible. Thank god I don't have to record footage for this level. Do you know how much footage I have for day 28 alone? Fuck this world. And day 31 is impossible once again. What a surprise. Finally, we're at Zomboss. And if the game had given us Chomper over Homing Thistle, I might have had a chance with this boss. But as it is right now, we can't beat this level with just PVZ1 plants. Outside of that, however, this boss is surprisingly easy. Banana launchers and bowling bulbs go a long way, especially with the high volume of plant food that you get from this level. It also wouldn't be a big way beach level without Tangle Kelp being bad in some way, so there's that as well. Either way, this level is over about as quickly as it starts. Sweet, merciful end. Big Wave Beach was hell to get through. I enjoy water as a mechanic in the first game, and there are elements of it that I enjoy in the second game as well. But I swear, certain levels just don't know how to tone down their mechanics to make them challenging in a fun way. Zombie spam is also a huge problem in this world, paired with the fact that nearly every zombie starts appearing in levels by the last couple days, even when they really shouldn't from a gameplay perspective like in Day 28. Every one of this world's special zombies are incredibly powerful on their own, let alone in groups or, I don't know, in the middle of your defense. Oh well, at least I got lily pad and tangle kelp. We have every freemium plants for zombies one plant in our arsenal, and then some. Time to take them back where everything started, in... Here we are in the future and it's wrong. Modern day, the final world. Don't be fooled by this lineup. This world encompasses every aspect of the previous 10 worlds. Well, except one. Both directly and indirectly. Most levels have a pretty obvious theme from the start, but others are a bit more abstract. The challenge of this world, outside of anything appearing, is going to be finding a strategy general enough to deal with anything appearing. But being the first day, we don't have to stress out too much. Day two spawns big wave beach portals. Fumeshrooms are probably our best bet, but I found that they get overwhelmed a bit easily. Day 3 introduces Newspaper Zombie, who really doesn't like his newspaper ripped. But unless we start getting something different, I think we're out of luck in terms of the challenge. Interestingly, all zombies from Neon Mixtape Tour work without the respected jams playing. That's not scary at all. Day 5 is where the world starts directly playing around with zombie types. For example, we have Parasol Zombie, which should roll out using Catapult Plants. But with Fume Shroom, we have a reliable primary attacker while Wintermelon slows the crowds. It also dawned on me that we can finally use Spike Weed again, let's go! Why is he so damn fast? There we go. We've got to produce 4,000 sun, but we've got gold tiles. So that's why the tiles are so far up. Yeah, I think I gotta stall a little more. These zombies don't mess around. Maybe it's just the excitement of the final world, but I've got to stay focused and not do this. Day 7 is where things start to get more chaotic. I brought Spike Weed due to Octo Zombie's similarities to Wizard, but the risk doesn't seem worth the reward. Especially when killing Octo Zombie doesn't take out the Octopi. Day 8 is Begooled, or Candy Crush if you're a nerd. Lightning Reed being here makes this level impossible by default but I still want to have fun by only using PVZ1 plant upgrades. That's not what I wanted to do. What the fuck was that? Victory Potatoes 2? Day 9's an impossible locked and loaded level, and the introduction to Balloon Zombies. I thought it was doing fine, but this level got stupid overwhelming around the end for some reason. I don't know how one Grave Buster is going to take all this out. It's interesting facing different zombies with the right counters to them. Belover invalidates so much here. Fumeshroom's piercing damage is great for ice blocks, and Melonpold is the cherry on top. I didn't even use the power tiles. Hey, we got Shadow Shroom. Also, the game auto picks garlic for some weird reason. Guess we should give this strat a try again? Honestly, that could have gone a lot worse. Newspaper zombies were rough to deal with, but I'd call this a success. 
Sorry, don't lose more than 10? What zombies are you throwing at me? Eh, oh. Actually, none of these dinos are particularly bad. Never mind. There's no time to stall when dealing with excavator zombies. What am I supposed to do? Okay, it seems like insta-kills are the way to go. But, if we couldn't lose more than, let's say, five plants though, this level would have been unreasonably difficult. Oh, another one of these. Holy shit, I've also got to make 150 matches. I'm just glad this wasn't be Ghoul Twist, because I still don't know how to play that game 12 years later. Really adamant on sending out Bucketheads, huh? In hindsight, upgrades made that a lot easier. Well, thanks for giving me garlic again. Better than day 9? As for day 15, this might be doable. Oh no, imp cannons. I never thought I'd see them again. I tried Tallnut, but you know how that always works. This level is uncharacteristically nice though. Blover takes care of so much, even imps from the imp cannon. Be sure not to let them stay alive for too long though, unless you want to have to time Blover before the explosion. Either way, this level is more than possible. We've now arrived at day 16, the culmination of every gargantuar stage we've beaten thus far. And I'm not gonna lie, this level is insane. Lee fucking stupid and not give us lawnmowers or even one plant food. Especially when we're dealing with this. If it wasn't obvious by now, we're not beating this level with just PVZ1 plants. Not with bad RNG, not even with really good RNG. If two winter melons can't take out one gargantuar, then I'm not sure what else can. It doesn't help that this level just expects you to get lucky sometime. The run I won saw me getting Cold Snapdragon, a plan I didn't even know was possible to get until my 7th try. If there's any viable advice I can give you, it's to make the best out of your instance, and to prioritize killing hair metal gargantuars over any other. With enough luck and good play, day 16 will be yours. Eventually, of course. Day 17 is nothing too bad. For some reason, every Neon Mixtape Tour Zombie functions the way they should except Arcade Zombie. Which, I'm not complaining about, but it's a weird oversight. Bro thought a grave would win against this. After day 17, we've arrived at the halfway point of modern day. I know, after day 17? Just keep that in mind for later. Zombie bull riders, huh? At least Tallnut works against balloon zombies as well. Dude did not want to switch lanes. Day 19 is the escape route tutorial, who is probably the most original premium plan to date, and I'm glad it exists for its complexity alone. The escape mechanic is super cool, and although we can win with potato mines, for example, escape route itself is original plan for zombies too. You'd think that after carrying me for multiple worlds straight that I'd remember to bring Blover, right? Day 21 introduces All-Star Zombie, who is based on Football Zombie, and for the first time in this run's history, I don't think Fumeshroom and Puffshroom are going to cut it against Newspaper Zombie. However, Melon Bolts, despite taking a while to set up, are actually quite effective. Except here, don't look. <sighs> God damn it. You're not even trying. This level's also weirdly easy. I thought the gimmick was that you had to make less matches because the zombies they sent out were harder, but that just didn't seem to be the case. I didn't know Big Wave Beach had 33 days. Day 24 introduces superfan imps, who can get kicked forward by all-star zombies to destroy my plants. But unfortunately, this mechanic isn't as well utilized as it could have been, so they're quite a forgettable threat. Okay, so concept-wise, I love this level. But the fact that only intensive carrot can be used makes this one impossible by default. I did play through this level only reviving PBZ1 plants, and it went pretty well. Until I remembered that slider tiles were a thing. Why is Modern Day so obsessed with Pianist Zombie? They can kick floating zombies forward? Damn, the more you know, I guess. I think Modern Day is the only world to have more than three unique Brain Buster levels. I fumbled that guard kill so bad. Day 30 is the final objective level in this run, and it's probably one of the hardest levels in Modern Day. Thankfully, I found a strategy that seemed to work. Executing that strategy, however, comes with its difficulties. You're gonna want to stall as much as possible. The flowers make stalling a bit harder to do, but if you can get three rows of sunshrooms, four walnuts, 
and at least one winter melon before the first wave, then you should be ready for what's to come. Start building up your fume shrooms and replace your sun shrooms for more winter melons. Having something to chill every lane is very important, as there won't always be groups of zombies to rely on for splash damage. And, most important of all, pay attention to your walnuts. The moment one disappears for longer than a second is about how long it takes for the zombies to trample the flowers. Don't be afraid to use other plants to stall in a dire situation. And I do mean that. With enough practice and skill, this level's more than possible. No zen garden, no extra seed slot, no nothing. And finally, we have day 31, which isn't an impossible locked and loaded level for once. So hey, why don't we beat this level using the most important plants in our run? Well, it was possible. But it didn't really hit as hard as it could have. How about we instead go out with style? And with that, we finally arrived at Zomba... says? Do you remember when I mentioned the halfway point after day 17 instead of day 16 earlier? Well, that's because modern day consists of 3 Zomboss fights, meaning this world has 34 days over the usual 32. This is the final challenge of our adventure. Let's jump into day 32 and see what'll happen. Well this certainly rings a bell. If the fight is giving me plants from Wild West, it sure isn't in a rush to give me any winter melons. Let's try that again. And now we're in ancient Egypt, with plants from Pirate Seas. If it wasn't obvious by now, the game is mixing up previous zombie boss battles with plants from what would be the next world. So the ancient Egypt fight is giving me plants from Pirate Sea, the Pirate Seas fight is giving me plants from Wild West, etc and restarting the level shuffles what fight is going to appear. In the case of Day 32, the possible fights that can appear are in Ancient Egypt, Pirate Seas, and Wild West. For the sake of the challenge, I'm going to see how many of these fights are possible with just PvZ1 plants. Just remember that if at least one fight is possible per day, then that day is possible. And in order for a day to be impossible, every fight cannot be beaten with our challenge restrictions. With that explanation out of the way, let's give these fights another shot. Seems like luck really wasn't on our side the first time, because we finally got Wintermelon. I wasn't kidding when I said that slowing Zomboss makes him a lot easier to deal with. You also get a lot more Melon Pulse in this fight thanks to the added difficulty and removal of minecarts. Of course, this means a higher volume of Gargantuars, but Split Pea and its plant food effect really take care of them. I'm really happy that Split Pea got to have one last hurrah before the challenge ends. You've still got to deal with Split Peas and Lightning Reeds building up in your conveyor belt, so knowing when to place and shovel is incredibly important so they don't attack. If you can keep up a strong enough defensive melon bolts, then this fight will be yours. But wait, we've still got another hurdle to overcome. Believe it or not, the fight in ancient Egypt is a lot harder than in pirate seas. For one, Zomboss's missile attack and Tomb Razor zombies spawn graves, which can severely overwhelm your lawn given enough time. The second issue is also an issue of the original Pirate Seas battle, in that the plants given are only strong in numbers, 
You have to prioritize killing Tomb Raider zombies as quickly as possible through Spikeweed and Spikeweed's plant food effect. The sooner they die, the less graves they can spawn, which is crucial for Colonel Pool and 3Peter to perform their best. On the topic of 3Peter, be sure to use this plant food effect to stop Zomboss' charge attack, as the damage it does to Zomboss directly is equivalent to that of a cherry bomb. This fight is going to be a lot of work in the beginning, but if you can make it to later phases, then your defense should suffice enough to take out Zomboss as soon as you can. And before you know it, it's another fight down. As for Wild West, there aren't any plants given that we can use, so the fight just isn't possible. I do want to mention that Zomboss can spawn Carthead Zombies and Rodeo Legend Zombies in this fight, which the player wouldn't have encountered unless they played the optional Wild West expansion levels. I get why they spawn in the context of what plants are given, but also fuck you game. A present, huh? Cool, I guess. I can make 4,000 coins in a couple days though, so I mean, I don't know. Uh, Day 32, despite only 2 out of 3 fights being possible, is possible overall. Day 33, however, isn't as lucky. I hate it here. Unlike the original Frostbite Caves fight, we aren't given 3 Peters, which means that the only plan we can use is Boosted Lily Pad. As for Dark Ages, what? No peanut? We can't even use Lily Pad or Tangle Kelp, as if they even helped us in the original fight. Only one fight remains for us to try, and thankfully, we might be okay. Because Dark Ages didn't even give me this many puff shrooms. That shield ain't protecting you from this. Smoke em. Easiest Zombot fight yet. I don't even think he spawned any machine other than Shield Zombie and Gargantua Prime. At the very least, one out of three fights means Day 33 is possible as well. <laughs> and now, for the moment you've all been waiting for. Day 34. Unlike the previous two days, Day 34 has four different Zomboss battles that we can get. Beginning with Frostbite Caves, well... Yeah. I was going to praise this level for not giving you any fire plants, which meant that you had to beat it the way I had to beat Frostbite Caves, but... Nah. Bro's having the time of his life, though. As for the next Zomboss... Garlic's killing it again. Neon Mixtape Tour is the most consistent Zomboss fight with its original version. We still get Cactus, and what's even better is that we're given more than three of them. The bad part is that this level is still designed like ass. Out of every fight so far, this one could have done the most with having its phases switched around, because starting by increasing movement speed means that Buckethead and Punk Zombies are guaranteed to reach our lawnmowers before Cactus can kill them. Even with Cactus boosted, Punk Zombies still get close enough to make Cactus hide, and you still need good enough RNG to get Cactus consistently enough to kill zombies and damage Zomboss. But hey, let's say you manage to get through phase 1 out of 5. Well, be ready for Shockwave and Glitter Zombie Spam that can take out your entire setup if you're unlucky enough. The closest attempt I've had so far lasted until phase 3. And seeing as I already lost, I decided to put those 4,000 free coins to good use and see how much further I could have gotten. Unfortunately, it took a lot of power tosses just to suggest this level could be beatable. And so, until proven otherwise, it looks like the most possible Zomboss of Day 34 will remain unbeaten legitimately. But there's still one more Zomboss left. For some reason, the modern day Zomboss is just the Jurassic Marsh Zomboss again. Whoa, talk about lazy design. Jokes aside, having to use Shadow Plants for the fight actually makes it fairly original. However, having to use Shadow Plants also makes this fight, and this level, impossible. Challenge aside, this fight is ridiculously hard. Phase 1 isn't horrible. It's not easy either, but Raptors and Stegosauruses are manageable. Anything beyond Phase 1 is some mix of annoying and completely unfair. For one, Pterodactyls. How these stupid things got past balancing is beyond me. Second, Zomboss cannot chill out for the life of him. Anytime he isn't calling dinos or spawning zombies, he's firing lasers and destroying my plants. Which, I know is what he does every fight. But it's a bit more personal in this fight. 
I've had attempts where I have nothing but a couple moonflowers on the lawn past phase 3, and sometimes he just completely destroys everything I put out. Which, you know, is really helpful to take out all of this. Seriously, I don't know if I'm just extremely unlucky, or if it's designed to be this way. Either way, this fight is only so fun. I didn't even mention the Ankylosaurus! My first winning attempt may have not been the most professional. I did eventually get it with better luck. But I'd say as the final Zomboss battle in Adventure Mode, it could have been a whole lot worse. We've done it. We've beaten Plants vs Zombies 2 with just Plants vs Zombies 1 plants. Maybe not right now, but in the grand scheme of things, nonetheless. I don't remember how far I got when I first attempted this challenge, but to say that I finally finished something I started a couple years back is definitely an accomplishment. 11 worlds, 317 levels, 20 unique Zomboss battles. I bet you've been looking forward to the final tally of possible and impossible levels. Well, get ready, because here it is. Out of 317 total levels, which includes the 5 tutorial levels and excluding any of the expansion levels, 243 levels are beatable with only Plants vs Zombies 1 Plants, and 74 are impossible with only Plants vs Zombies 1 Plants. However, a few impossible levels may be possible with better RNG, no boosted plants, or a different strategy entirely. The final totals aren't set in stone, so I implore anyone to give certain levels a try. I've linked a Google spreadsheet in the description with a list of every level I played, and it should be complete by the time this video releases, so go check it out! But with that, the challenge comes to an end. I appreciate you all for sticking with this series till the end, and enjoying the content I make. If you were to tell me a couple months back that I'd be at the place I am now, well, I'd anticipate it. I may do a bonus video covering the expansion levels in the future, so look out for any announcements related to that. And yeah, that's really all I have to say. Thank you for watching this video, or the series, to its end. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Peace out.